So in this video we're going to talk a little bit about algebraic division. Here's a typical example. Divide 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 3 by 2x minus 3. Now I'm going to show you how to actually divide this out. I know some students find this a bit, a bit difficult because it looks fairly complicated. But if you look more closely, you'll realize that there's just a kind of a, a repeating pattern to what, what happens here. So I'm going to try and explain to you how you can recognize that pattern. So the very first thing we do is we divide the first term here into the first term here. The easiest way to do that is divide the number into the number, so 2 into 2 goes 1, and then the x into the x cubed, which goes x squared. So we get uh, x squared up here, because 2 into 2 goes 1, we don't really need to write, write the 1, uh, and then x into x cubed goes x squared times. Now if you're not sure where that comes from, I can do a quick explanation for you. So first thing you got to realize is that x cubed is the same as x times x times x. So if we're dividing x into x cubed, it's the same as if, if we're dividing x times x times x by x. In which case the x's here will cancel each other out and you're left with x by x, which is x squared. Now an alternative way of thinking of this is when you divide x to the power of 3 by x to the power of 1, you subtract the indices. So you get x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is x to the power of 2. Now I'm just showing you this here to explain where I got the x squared from. You do not need to write this in the answer to the question. Okay, so let's continue with our uh, calculations. So remember, the first thing that we did was we divided the 2x into the 2x cubed to get x squared. The next thing we do is we multiply the x squared by 2x minus 3. Now I usually advise my students to use kind of guidelines like this one here when they're trying to learn this first. You don't always have to use it, but at the start it's useful because it helps you kind of memorize the shape of the question. And this is especially important for this type of question because, as I said before, it kind of involves a pattern. And this will help you pick up this method a lot quicker. So as I said, we multiply the x squared by all of this. That's going to give us 2x cubed minus 3x squared. So first of all, we multiply the x squared by the 2x to get 2x cubed. And then we multiply the x squared by the minus 3 to get minus 3x squared. At this stage of the problem, you should always expect these two terms to be equal. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change the signs of these two guys so that when we add these, they will, they will add to 0. Now change the sign, that's become a minus, and this has become a plus. So as I said, when we add these, we get 0, or nothing. And then when we add these two guys, that's 1x squared plus 3x squared gives us 4x squared. Our next step now is to drag down the minus 8x. And I usually draw in a little arrow for this. This helps me, again, with, with pattern recognition. It helps me memorize uh, the technique I used to solve this problem. And it also tells me that we're at the end of the pattern. Right, so once you see the arrow here, that tells you that you have to go back to the start and do what you did at the start. So what do we do at the start? We divided 2x into 2x cubed. Now we have to divide 2x into 4x squared to get what goes here. So 2 into 4 goes twice, and then x into x squared goes x times. You, know, if, you notice if this is an x squared, then, then the next term here will always be an x. And we should expect this, this term here to be just a number, a constant. 
So once we have the 2x here, we multiply it by the 2x minus 3. So we're repeating the same pattern as before. So again, I would encourage you to use a guideline for this. So 2x times 2x gives us 4x squared, and 2x times minus 3 gives us minus 6x. Now, again, here you see we have the same terms here, but we have to change the sign of this and this. So when we add these, we get nothing here. And when we add these guys, we get minus 2x. So next thing is we drag down the plus 3. And again, remember that the arrow signifies that we're at the end of the loop. So we have to go back to what we did at the start. At the start, we divided 2x into 2x cubed to get this. So next, we have to divide 2x into minus 2x to get what goes here. So 2 into minus 2 goes minus 1. x just cancels into x, basically. It goes once. So minus 1 times 1, we don't have to write like that. We just say minus 1, because minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. So once again, we multiply the term that's here by all of this to get what goes here. So you're usually pretty confident that you've got the correct answer when, once you see that both of these are identical. Uh, now we can change the signs here if we want to uh, so that they cancel each other and we end up with 0 here or you can just type in 0 straight away. As I say, once these are identical you, you end up with a 0 remainder and that means uh, the the, the, the correct answer is x squared plus 2x minus 1 in this case. Now, I don't know if you can recognize a difference between this question and the last question we had. Um, this is a kind of a slightly exceptional question that might come up on the exam. If you notice, this first term here is an x cubed, and the next term is an x. Now, in the previous question, the, the second term was an x squared we're missing an x squared in this question. So if you want to solve this, a mistake would be to just to, to write it like it appears here, divide x minus 5 into x cubed minus 19x minus 30. That won't work. In other words, if you write it like this, it's just not going to work for you. right? So what you have to do, instead of doing it like this, what you have to do is introduce a dummy x squared term. So I'll show what, what I mean by that now. So here's how I would do it. I'd introduce a dummy term here, 0 times x squared. doesn't really matter what sign you use here because this is really just 0. 0 times any number is 0. So minus 0 and plus 0 doesn't matter. So once we have this term in here, everything should work as, as before. Okay, so the first thing we do is we divide the x into x cubed, which gives us x squared. Then we're going to multiply that by x plus 5, which gives us x cubed minus 5x squared. Now, we again, we have to remember to change the signs. So the x cubes cancel each other as usual. And then all we have to do then is add the 5x squared to the 0x squared, which is just like adding 5x squared to nothing. So that gives you 5x squared. Then we drag our 19x down, uh, and as usual, we're at the end of the loop here, so we go right back to the start. So we divide x into 5x squared, which gives us 5x. Again, we multiply that 5x by x minus 5, which in turn gives us 5x squared minus 25x. Now again, we're going to have to change the signs. So as usual, the 5x squared cancels with the 5x squared, gives us nothing. Add these two guys, we get 6x, uh, which leads, leads us to the, the end of the loop yet again. So we have to drag now drag down the minus 30. And, and of course, this means that we go right back to the start. We divide the x into the 6x to get plus 6 and as usual, we multiply the 6 by the x minus 5 to give us 6x minus 30. And again, because we, we, we note that they're, they're identical, 
we can just underline it and put zero at the end. This is effectively saying that if we subtract this from this, we get zero, which is true. So once we have zero remainder, we have our answer. The answer is x squared plus 5x plus 6. So the key thing to take away from this part of the video is that in some questions you might not be given, there might be a missing term. For example, here we had a missing x squared term. In another question, you might have a missing x term. So if that were the case, then you would put in a dummy x value, so 0 times x. And it doesn't really matter what sign you use here. Um, so that's all you have to remember. Once you, once you do that, you just uh, proceed as you would normally with a long division, algebraic long division question.